Hello all. Welcome to the episode 26 in hexadecimal of Debugging TV Frames program. You can type your questions during this episode. If I can't answer particular questions now, I then post answers on the website debugging.tv. Due to some memory dumps, we analyzed since the last episode. We made a diversion now to a user space and resume our kernel space journey next Monday. Because at the end of the last episode I promised to continue with kernel space, live debugging. But today we uh, do a diversion to a user space. The topic of this episode is heap corruption from two types of buffer overruns in Windows. Overflow and underflow or overwrite and underwrite as sometimes say differently. Buffer overflows happen more frequently and their typical case is illustrated on the next slide. To diagnose such an override, the typical solution is to use full page heap. This can be done by setting appropriate image file execution flags in registry using tools such as gflags from debugging tools for Windows. So after we enable certain flags, such as full page heap enabled and uh, upon the next specify, specified process start each allocations each allocation then is done by the end of a separately allocated page with the next page reserved without access so when we have an override it is immediately caught with an access violation exception. When an underwrite, we have a different story with an underwrite. And uh, if we enable a full page heap, the corruption will not be caught immediately like in a normal heap case. So a different full page heap option is required here and this is illustrated on the next slide. If we put heap allocations at the end of each page then we are able to catch underwrite or underflow. To test such a scenario we wrote a small program in C. So now I switch to Visual Studio. This is a very, very simple program. So basically what it does in a, in a loop 100 times, it allocates 100 bytes and stores each pointer in an array. In the middle of such a loop, we do a buffer underwrite. Or underflow. And then, because this corruption will not be detected in a normal scenario, then what we do, we do free, we free all these saved pointers, all allocations, and of course, only when we do free, heap corruption is detected. And so what we do, we actually already run and uh, dump was saved. I use local dumps registry key. So what we do, we open this dump and I also what I do I increase font it 
bit so first we open log file so let's name it And now we fix symbols. Do a load. And um, stack trace, we see so we see that heap corruption was detected during heap free and uh, actually if you type all this with frames and switch to frame 12 We see a uh, source code here, so we see uh, that this happened in the loop. And for example, we can check so on the right what I do. I see the value, check the value of i, which is 50. Actually, we can actually tooltips work here as well. So you see that 15, so in the middle of a loop, actually the other i is probably belongs to a different, the previous loop that finished, the second i variable. So this is our i variable, and you see that in the, in the middle, so when we have, we corrupted, so only uh, then corruption was detected. So what we do now, we now enable full page heap. So basically before that we examine, so what GFLAX does from debugging tools for Windows, it sets some options in image file execution op options. So for us, this is this registry key, buffer and derive.exe, and uh, what we do now, we enable full page heap buff and derive, so full. So we enabled full page heap and then we refresh registry, we see that global flux was changed and the page heap flux equal three. And when we run application it crashes again. And so, let's open a different memory dump. The second one. So here we also log open, open a log file. And uh, we fix symbols. Reload them. And if we examine stack trace, we see something changed. Now verifier is invoked, another DLL, and we also see that if we switch, if we go to the previous crash dump, 
we see that heap free RTL free heap is used and now we see the RTL debug free heap is used but still if we go to frame now the frame is 16 and uh, we see that all this heap corruption was detected during heap free and not at the time of corruption. So this is because there was a buffer under right. Actually, if we use analyze dash v, we see the diagnostic here is application application verifier heaps corrupted heap block start stamp and uh, this uh, it also says this happens for buffer underruns so because of these diagnostics we investigated this issue further and uh, we now add backwards flag that enables backwards full page heap and if we now go to registry and check refresh flags we see that the value of page heap flags is now 13 global, global flag stays the same so we open another instance of a debugger and now so if we run application it crashes this time again so the third dump we open so we log open log file symbols to reload and let's examine stack trace so you see there's no heap free here exception happens right in main function so let's go to specific uh, C, our frame number. And if we go to uh, source code, we see the crash happened right at the moment of corruption. So you see the effect of this different full page heap flag variant so let's go back to our presentation so this is what happens with backwards full page heap and finally on this slide you see the difference in registry if you want to check flags so the usual question here usually the usual question is how to verify that the correct option was specified especially if this was done by a customer of your product so for both cases global flags will be the same so if we type the flag command we get the same actually even in the last case, you know, the description is misleading, so it's not, this is not placing allocations at the end of pages. So the difference is in page heap flag, as indicated by a red arrow. So if you inspect the register, you see all these differences. So this is all for this presentation. 
And now this is the usual ad slide of forthcoming training sessions and free webinars. Since the previous episode, we added the forthcoming .NET DAP analysis training right after the comprehensive accelerated Windows memory dump analysis training. So if you enroll to the latter training, you can immediately practice with .NET. We also plan accelerated network trace analysis training after summer based on our forthcoming pattern-oriented network trace analysis webinar, which is free in, in June. Actually, it should be June 24th, uh, the next free webinar. Was changed, moved for one week further. A change in the final slide. And so, thank you for watching this episode. Please later check out the slides and recorded video from debugging.tv. The next episode should be this Monday, and we continue with live kernel debugging. So, thank you, and bye-bye.